I want to, this is where the podcast is challenging. This is the visual uh, portion of our audio podcast, but I'm going to see if I can't um, boil it down to you. But I'm going to go into a uh, actual power file from an athlete. He's 47 years old. He lives in Washington, D.C., and every he's a, a criterium road racer, Tom Trollis. Every Saturday, he's really fortunate. They have a great uh, cycling community out there, and they do a hard team ride every every Saturday. He's 47. He has teammates that are in their 20s, and they ride really hard, and they challenge him and push him quite hard so that his data, he'll turn in some uh, really hard sections. And so... In Training Peaks, uh, what I do, and this everyone can do this at, at home. You know, please try this at home. Yeah, it's hard, um, and it's like like Frank said, it's hard to show yeah. this in the audio, especially if you're listening to the podcast in audio. Mm-hmm. We'll try and put some of these uh, up in the video version um, of the podcast. But again, this is just like what we can hopefully walk you through, just auditorily, if that's a mm-hmm. word. Um, Auditorial, auditory, <laughs> audio, aud- audibly. I don't know. Audibly. Um, but this is something that you also have to just experiment and do on your own and with your own files. I think that's the best way yeah. to just learn and figure it out is to like be your own guinea pig and you know take a take a hard group ride power file and just kind of follow along with what we're saying. And I think that could be a, a helpful way to, to go about it. Absolutely. So the first thing I look at when I'm looking at a hard group ride file is I'm going to go into Training Peaks. I'm going to go into WKO. I'm going to go into the other, whatever, you know, today's plan, other software. But we're just going to talk from Training Peaks. Um, in that lightning bolt is a really great feature because right away you open up the file and you're like, hey, there's a lightning bolt. That means they've set some uh, really good power outputs. So then I go straight into the peak power outputs. This is also that the mean maximal chart in WKO. And I'm going to go straight to 20-minute power first. And so in Steven's case, peak 20-minute power was 348 watts. Normalized. Normalized. And his FTP, the morning of this group ride, was 306 watts. Okay? So that is like... uh, That is like, in, in terms of intensity factor... The intensity factor from that 20 minute normalized power output doesn't really make sense from the critical power duration model. It is physically impossible. Well, I'm not gonna say impossible. It is unlikely that an athlete is gonna do 12% greater than their FTP for 20 minutes using the critical power model. There's probably going to be some exceptions, but I know Steven. So right away, that is, that's a red flag of like, hey, he went really hard for 20 minutes. Now that's his top end, 348. You know, it, it's definitely not higher than that. So I'm going to look at that 20 minute power. I can, you know, I'll also look at heart rate. And just to compare to the average power is 304 watts. Right. So right. that, that's a pretty big spread between normalized mm-hmm. and average. average. But this was a group ride. You know, they, I'm sure his heart rate goes up and down. Yeah. The speed um, goes also up and down. There's periods where they're really flying. There's periods where the, his heart rate was pegged at like 178 beats per minute for like two or three minutes. Um so that's, you know, that two, the, 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 the portion where he was going really, really hard, we're talking, uh, we're just going to like 410 watts for three and a half minutes, you know, and that's, that's when the, the group ride is game on, you know, they're, they're doing a shootout. They're kind of, you know, this is the horse to the barn section. There's a lot of the, you know, a lot of group rides have these kind of set formats where you kind of race to a certain part of the the road and that's what makes these group rides so good and you know he's setting really high power outputs during he's doing vo2 anaerobic efforts during but getting back to the 20 minutes you know so 348 normalized 304 average okay so then i'm going to look at so that's the top end of what his ftp is then let's go to uh peak one hour and peak one hour is 283 for 60 minutes. 
Now, during that section, um, Stephen, you know, let me know he wasn't going as hard as he could during that, that, that 60 minute stretch. So right away, now we got our top end 348. Now we got our, what his FTP is at least at 283. And, uh, I think that's a 65 watt window. Okay. So now we're going to narrow in and looking at the heart rate data, getting back to this 20 minute section, he went hard. He went really hard for more than 20 minutes. And so where he went hard is, is the visual analysis. He went hard for about 43 minutes. And during that 43 minutes, his normalized power is 337 watts. So now, now I have another point that's within the, the high and the low. That's going to eat this, this 337 now is more closer to his FTP. Uh, his heart rate was 162 beats per minute, and his max heart rate during that time was 178. His threshold heart rate is 168. And group ride data for with heart rate, this is a limitation because he's good enough, even during these really hard efforts, to get some recovery by sitting on and to, to recover a little bit. Mm. So the heart rate data is going to be a little bit underrepresentative. Normalized power, this is where the, the beauty of normalized power, 337. Now, that number is 15% greater than his set FTP. That is also physiologically not impossible, but unlikely uh, in the critical power duration model. So we're getting closer. We're, 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 now we're getting closer. Like, now we're know. down to like 337. And you know, one of the things that I'll ask Stephen in the post activity comments and is like, how hard were you going? And, and the answer is, you know, I was pretty, pretty close to my limit. I had stopped rotating and pulling through. Now I was sitting on. So now we have 43 minutes, pretty, almost as hard as he can go at 337 Watts. And what's interesting about 43 minutes is that it's 23 more minutes than a field test. So that's like over double. And it's only 17 minutes shy of the true definition of FTP of 60 minutes. Hmm. So we're getting getting closer. And uh, what I will do is, you know, if this was like 50, 55 minutes, I would just use that data and say, that's your new FTP. Guys and gals, if, you, if your peak 60 minute normalized power is greater than what you have your FTP set at, guess what? That's your new FTP. That's your new FTP. That, you know, just that by definition, whatever you've done, 60 minute normalized is your new FTP. And, but you can't leap from 43 minutes to 60 minutes just yet. And so this is just a red flag of like, hey, your FTP was 306 the morning of this group ride, but here you've proven that, it, that it's higher. Do we know by exactly how much? No, not really. Does it matter? Uh, well, not, I mean, it'd be nice to know, but we're not going to like go do a field test to, to do it. You know, it would just suffice it to say, I think it's gratifying enough just to know that your, your FTP has increased. And so what I will do is I'll go back to what we know his FTP is at least minimally proof. And so now I'm going to go back to this, to his FTP, I'm going to take 5% less than 337. And that's his new FTP of 320 Watts. And I'll let Steven know. And he's like, I'm going to have a celebratory cookie mm -hmm. and you feel good about your training and you, you know, you go about your training, don't interrupt your plan. And you're going to go back and ride hard the next week. And guess what? This 43 minute section is somewhat scripted in this group ride. We're going to look at this again and, uh, you know, see what he does next week. And it's, that's why it's, it's not like there are these set rules, but it's this deductive reasoning of using the data of what you know, at least what you know, minimally, and just kind of arriving at a, um, a measure of improvement. Right. Cause again, I think a lot of people, you know, continue to get caught up on looking at FTP as this, like, you know, kind of end all be all of performance and of progression and yeah i mean it obviously certainly is a really important metric but 
like we were talking about this organic way of looking at, at power is sure it's not like a you know a hard and fast ftp test but it also is such a great way to see that progression mm -hmm. to see how you're changing over time and especially if you have a lot of these data points i mean people are doing group rides every week like yeah that's more than most people like most people don't do field tests more than you know once or twice a year like seems like you know and so mm -hmm. you can kind of just either use the deductive reasoning like you're talking about or just you know yeah highlight that one section of the of the group ride that you know is kind of like the crux of it and just chart that over time and just see how you're improving you know yeah. and that's a, that's a great way to do it because it can be easy to like just look between field tests but there could be six months in between them and then it's like oh, how do you measure that like that's a that's a big spread using this method of deductive reasoning is the reason why i only have my athletes test at once or twice a year because i'll have them do a field test before the hard group rad season begins just to get as you know like your sweet spot numbers and your your off season ftp but then if they have this hard group ride there can go do, I don't need to have them test again. It's a waste of tr yeah. valuable training time. We'll just get it from their group ride and race data. And then maybe later on in the summer, um, you know, we'll, there'll be a time to test, but guess what? This gets into, you know, if you need to test or not, if you have a 20 minute time trial, a t any time trial, really, if you have a 20 minute time trial or a 40 K, which is going to be about 60 minutes, you don't need to test again. That's, that is the test. You know, here in Colorado, we have the Lookout Mountain Hill Climb. That's like a 20-minute test coming up. Um, and so you can use your race data um, over top of, you know, trying to schedule in, in a field test. So the race data plus your deductive reasoning, hard group rider, power data, hard group rider, race data, you know, really, in my opinion, is for most athletes, they're going to dig deeper, go harder, extrinsically motivated, number on their back, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. That's, that's better data than a, than a 20 minute test data. 